Have you ever felt certain about something only to have others insist it didn't happen that way? It's probably happened more than you realize. And that means you might be a target of gaslighting, a powerful form of manipulation that can leave you questioning your sanity. Welcome to the Mindful Communication Revolution. I'm Stephen Walters, and I'm here to help you strengthen your personal and professional relationships with effective communication strategies. These skills are crucial in today's digital age, where manipulation tactics like gaslighting have become increasingly common in both personal and professional settings. By the end of this video, you'll be able to tell when someone is gaslighting you and what you can do to protect yourself from its insidious manipulation. Once you see gaslighting for what it is, you can't unsee it. Before we explore those telltale signs, let's clarify that gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation where someone makes you question your own reality, memory, or perceptions. It's a deliberate attempt to erode your trust in your own mind. But how exactly does it differ from simple lying? First off, think about why someone lies. Usually it's to save their own skin or get something they want, right? But gaslighting, that's a whole other ballgame. The gaslighter is trying to mess with your head and make you doubt yourself so much that you end up relying on them to tell you what's real. Now, lying is pretty straightforward. It's just false statements. But gaslighting, it's like lying on steroids. They'll deny things happened, contradict you, and even make you feel silly for your own feelings. It's a whole toolkit of manipulation. Here's another big difference. Lies are often a one-time thing, or they happen here and there. Gaslighting, though, it's a long game. It happens over and over, slowly chipping away at your sense of reality. Let me give you a real-world example. Say a news outlet lies about the unemployment rate. That's just false information. But gaslighting would be if they kept insisting the economy is great, even when everyone's struggling. And when you point out the hard times, they'd say, oh, a few people struggling doesn't mean things are bad. Or why are you so negative? Look at the stock market. See the difference? Lying is about the information. Gaslighting is about making you doubt your own take on things. It's just not giving you the wrong map. It's making you think you can't read any map at all. That's the insidious nature of gaslighting. It goes beyond simple misinformation to shake your confidence in your own judgment. Now that we've distinguished gaslighting from lying, let's explore four outward signs of gaslighting. These are behaviors you can observe in others. The red flags that may indicate they're attempting to manipulate your reality. Let's explore the outward signs of gaslighting first. These are behaviors you can observe in others. The red flags that may indicate they're attempting to manipulate your reality. Let's dive into these red flags one by one. The first red flag is denying your experience. Picture this. You're absolutely certain something happened, but someone looks you dead in the eye and says, nope, never happened. You must be imagining things. Sound familiar? That's Gaslighting 101. These master manipulators have a few tricks up their sleeves. They might flat out deny your reality. That conversation? That never happened. You're making it up. Or they'll try to minimize your feelings. Oh, come on, you're blowing this way out of proportion. It wasn't that bad. Sometimes they'll even counter with their own facts. Actually, our data shows the complete opposite of what you're saying. Now, let's bring this into the real world. Imagine you're watching the news and you hear something like this. Despite all those reports about people struggling to make ends meet, our analysis shows the economy is booming. All that talk about financial hardship? Totally exaggerated. Sounds a bit like that politician who insists everything's great while you're looking at your empty wallet, right? Here's the takeaway. When someone constantly denies what you know to be true, especially when others are backing you up, that's a major red flag. Trust your gut. Your experiences are real and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The second red flag is diverting or deflecting blame. Ever feel like you're playing a game of not it with someone? That's what this tactic is all about. The gaslighter is like a master magician, always trying to redirect your attention away from their actions. You might hear something like, why are you always bringing this up? Or you're the one with the problem, not me. See what they did there? Suddenly, you're the one on trial. Politicians and media figures are pros at this. Imagine a news anchor saying, critics are focusing on current policies, but these issues have deep roots in decisions made decades ago. Why aren't we talking about those past administrations instead? Clever, right? 
They've just shifted the entire conversation from current problems to ancient history. It's like blaming your current bad hair day on that awful haircut you got in middle school. The third red flag is when compassionate language is used as a weapon. This one's tricky because it sounds so nice on the surface. It's like they're wrapping their manipulation in a warm, fuzzy blanket. You might hear things like, I'm only doing this because I care about you, or I know what's best for you. Aww, how sweet, or is it? In the political world, it might sound like this. These new regulations might seem strict, but they're truly for the good of all citizens. We're limiting certain freedoms now to ensure a better future for everyone. Sounds caring, doesn't it? But remember, if it's making you uncomfortable or goes against your values, it's not actually compassionate. It's control in disguise. Lastly, but definitely not least, we have isolation tactics. This is when the gaslighter tries to cut you off from others, making you feel like you're all alone in your experiences. In personal relationships, they might discourage you from seeing friends or family, but in the public sphere, it can be more subtle. Imagine a talk show host saying, if you're not supporting this initiative, you're clearly not a true patriot. Real Americans stand united on this issue. Whoa there! Suddenly, if you disagree, you're not just wrong, you're practically un-American. It's like they've drawn a line in the sand, and if you're on the other side, you're all alone. Pretty crafty way to make you feel isolated in your views, isn't it? Remember, all these tactics we've talked about, denying your experience, the blame shifting, the fake compassion, the isolation, they're all about one thing, control. The gaslighter's endgame is to manipulate your reality, to make you doubt yourself so much that you rely on them for the truth. Gaslighting thrives in silence and depends on isolation. When you're faced with gaslighting, trust your instincts. The truth is often the simplest explanation. But here's the thing, knowledge is just the beginning. The real challenge comes in dealing with the people who use these tactics against you, whether in your personal life or professional life. Now that you've mastered these four game-changing secrets to identify gaslighting, there's one more strategy that can help you go even further when you have to deal with difficult and oftentimes toxic people. It's queued up right now on your screen, and it's all about how to effectively handle the very people who often employ these gaslighting tactics against you. Thank you for being part of the Mindful Communication Revolution. Stay vigilant, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next video.